Welcome to the Texas Florist Association Virtual Classroom. I am Gina Waters, past president, Texas Master Florist, and part of the education team. Floral design instruction today will focus on three designs for the level two design certification. This certification is the second of two certifications your students may achieve while in high school. These certifications have helped many graduates receive an entry level job position into the floral industry. Let the designing begin. Welcome to the Level 2 Floral Design. Today I will be showing you the asymmetrical arrangement. My name is Bruce Easley and I'm a Texas Master Florist Advance and part of the TSFA education team. Items you will need for the asymmetrical arrangement are a low design bowl and a third of a brick of wet floral foam. You will also need two strips of quarter inch waterproof tape. When you're testing and the kids are testing, more than likely it will be one long piece of tape and they'll need to cut it in half. But today I'm showing you with two. You need to place the uh, tape parallel on the bowl, two strips on each side, leaving room in the center, plenty of room in the center for your design. And you don't want to wrap it all the way around your bow. You want to keep it nice and tidy on the sides. So the next thing you're going to need is nine hot pink carnations, one third of a bunch of mini carnations, have 10 stems of leather leaf. And that should complete all of your items you need to complete this arrangement. So what we're going to start with today is the skeletal of the flowers. The numbering in the asymmetrical arrangement is quite different from the symmetrical arrangement and you will find that in um, on our PowerPoint and I'm going to show that to you right now. So we're going to start with our number one. The number one, number two, and number three flowers are almost exactly like the symmetrical arrangement and the position only, but they're not in the same space. So this arrangement is 16 inches tall, approximately 16 inches tall and 16 inches wide. It's not the same as the symmetrical arrangement, which is 18 inches. So be sure this one's a little smaller, a little more compact. It's easier to fill in and takes less flowers to do it that way. So I'm going to start with the number one and it goes into the back part of the foam, just to the left side. Your left, not mine, because I'm standing behind it. <laughs> And then I'm going to place number two. Number two is going to be to the left side. A, um, asymmetrical arrangement is a three-sided composition having the form of a triangle with unequal sides. So rather than it all being symmetrical, it's going to be high on one side and low and longer on the other. So I'm going to place this carnation just into the side of the foam backwards. at about 10 o'clock. This one is going to be longer and it's going to be your number three flower. So it's going to go into the front part in front of your front piece of tape and it's going to go in at an angle. You don't want it to be laying on the table. You want it to be off the table. But these two flowers need to be, and you might make some adjustments as you're doing it, because this needs to be your asymmetrical line. This is what makes your arrangement asymmetrical. So if you have a wire or whatever, you want to lay it on there so that you see that that is asymmetrical. High and shorter, low and longer, and that gives you your asymmetrical. I'm going to be turning this around occasionally because it's very difficult to do this backwards. So. The number four arrangement goes just to the left and underneath that number one flower. So you should see that for your number four flower. Number five is a little bit different. We come down to the center of the arrangement. It's a little bit shorter. And it's going to go in the front right there. It's always difficult to keep your foam straight. Be sure you keep your foam uh, straight while you're making it. That way your line always stays intact. I'm going to go right in front of that 
the tape on the front side and put my number five flower. Number six and seven are your two bottom flowers. These two bottom flowers are going to continue your line of your asymmetrical line. So it's going to be a little shorter this one and the next one's going to be a little bit shorter. So it's going to create that line that goes downward. So I'm going right into the top and I'm pushing it in so that it's Let me make sure that's lower than that one, and it's not quite. So I'm going to readjust. Now it is. And I'm going to go ahead and place number seven so that you have it already. And it's going to be even lower. So see how these four carnations are doing a downward trend. The next one I'm going to do is number eight and number nine. And number eight, I think I can do this right. Number eight is going to go on this side. It's right in between these two, your number one and number two flowers. And then the last carnation is going to be your number, number nine flower. And it's going to be over here. It's going to be quite a bit lower and down in. Let me take a look at it. And that gives you your asymmetrical line. I've got this asymmetrical line going across here. So now I'm going to, the next step is going to be to add your leather leaf. You have 10 pieces of leather leaf to work with. So we always start by putting one in the back to support that number one flower. Layering your greenery is always good to go shadow the flowers underneath the flowers and give them support, just like you do in level one. That, has a, that doesn't change at all. I try and do the support for my first three flowers, and I try to put my greenery in basically in the same order I put my flowers in. So I'm sheltering underneath that number three flower right now so that you can see it. It also supports the flower really well too. So I'm gonna go in underneath this bottom. It's important just like in, when you did the symmetrical arrangement in level one to keep the greenery um, low all the right way around the bow from the front to the back both so that you cover all your mechanics and be sure that you're covering your phone. All of these little pieces like this are good to keep just like we've always done. You use them down low on the bottom to cover the foam. And then I'm going to go to the back side and do, I always like to do my um, base of my bowl and, and cover the base of my bowl first with small pieces. This arrangement does not require, uh, require as much uh, leather leaf as the symmetrical does. I'm going to turn it around so I can see it a little bit. Your foliage should radiate from the center. If you're going to use a wing in an arrangement like this, just always place it in the center so that you have it going the correct position. I put that small piece in there so that one is going forward and the one is back. From your focal point, it's going in opposite directions. So you get the idea of placing your leather leaf. Just make sure that it's going forward on this side, this side, this side, and make sure that your foliage is not covering up any of your flowers. You don't want to cover up 
You don't want any filler or any foliage in front of your mass flowers. I have one uh, uh, finished one over here that I'm going to pick up. Be sure that you have high to low on your asymmetrical line. One, that's one of the main things we will look for when we're grading. So it needs to be high to low and you'll be in good shape. There you have our level two asymmetrical arrangement. Thank you and good luck. I'm Debbie Waltman, Texas Master Florist. I'm part of the uh, instructor team for Texas State Florist Association. So as I said, this is the level two crescent corsage segment. We are going to do a wired and tape version. There are some glued versions out there, but we feel strongly that the students need to learn the wired and tape method because you will use those skills in so many other designs and it's just necessary for them as a beginning designer to have those skills. Also in constructing the crescent corsage, you also learn some principles and elements that carry over into the gluing of the corsage because you still need to, the gluing is an easier way to do a corsage, but you need the skills of the principles and elements they carry through in whatever kind of design you do. It's the backbone, the basics of all floral design and art. So I want to start off by saying the first things you're gonna need is your miniature carnations, some pittosporum or any type of foliage with the individual leaf. It could be English ivy. Uh, it could even be simple leather leaf tips. Uh, you will need Number 28, wire. The smaller the wire, the better you are. A wire has to be uh, enough to support the leaf. If I do this, or a flower, it has to support it, but it doesn't need to be so strong that it's stiff. You still need, want to manipulate it, but it has to have enough strength to support it that as skinny as possible. So you'll need pixie carnations, foliage, wire, and corsage tape. And I would emphasize maybe spending a whole class on wiring and taping just so that they get skills and confidence in using tape. It's basically crepe paper that's waxed and it stretches and it sticks to itself, but they need to get the skill of having it thinly done. So once you have these items, we're gonna move those to the side. So you'll take your miniature carnations. You're going to pick off six blossoms. You want a bud, a half open bud, three larger flowers, and then you're gonna drop down to a smaller flower. And I'm going to replace my sample. So bud, medium size, half open, three full blossoms, and then a smaller flower because we're gonna progress from small to large and then back down to small to get that taper. Also in your leaves, you are going to pick six to seven, you know, just prepare seven or eight leaves just to be on the safe side in case you tear one while you're working. Um, I like to lay all my stuff out in the progression so that I know my sizes and then when I'm working, I can pick up what I need. So that's your preparation. Then we're going to talk about leaves. The leaf is longer and bigger than I wanted it to be, but being a skilled florist, we'll just take our tools and make perfect what we want. So I cut up one side, I'm cutting up the other side of the midrib. The midrib is the middle stem of the leaf. So I went from that to half and to what I needed. So here's the size leaf we would like. Because um, you just never know what nature's going to give you on a given day. So cutting the wire. It's best not to cut blunt. Cut it at an angle so you get a good point. And then you're going to, um, lots of different ways of wiring leaves, but we teach the stitch method. You are going to take your leaf, insert the wire on one side of the midrib, go through the front and stitch it back out on the other side. So this is what it looks like from the front. This is what it looks like from the back. Also, 
I tend to go about halfway up because in the end, you may have to manipulate the leaf a little bit, and that's what the wire is about. It's so that you can manipulate the leaf. If you have it wired way down here at the bottom, then you can't bend the leaf that you, the way you want, and you just kind of always cup it over your finger to get a natural curve to it. So we have it stitched. We take the two wires, we pull them down, gently get a little crimp in there, flip it to the other side, and you'll, as you practice and get skills and comfortable with it, you'll figure out which hand works the best because sometimes I do things left-handed, sometimes I do them right-handed. So you just twist the wire once or twice to fix it. So for picking up speed while you're working with the corsage, once you lay it out, I would wire and tape all my flowers, wire and tape all my leaves. Don't go back and forth, back and forth, because that'll slow you down. And as a florist, uh, you don't want to spend a whole night at the shop. You're going to want to pick up speed. So do consolidate your actions so they're all at one time. So my leaf is wired. I take my tape, pinch it to itself with my thumb, my nail, and it will stick. And then you just travel down the stem. You don't need to go all the way down to the bottom. If you go all the way down to the bottom, you get a lot of bulk in your corsage. And one of the points that we grade on the end is that it's a lightweight corsage. So just tape down inch or so. So let me tape another one just here for an example. So pinch, and when you're taping, you're spinning the stem with one set of fingers and the other set of fingers is pulling and stretching on the tape. And it's best to stretch it down at an angle. You cover more territory. If you're, let's just do that one more time. If you're taping and you're pulling it perpendicular like this, you're not covering much space at one time. So stretch it, twist, stretch, twist on a downward um, direction. Okay, so my leaves are wired. Here's my set of wired leaves. And I'm a messy designer, but when I work corsages, I do like to have a clean area. So to wire the carnations, here we are going to cross hatch. So you're going to take your number 28 wire with a sharp point, insert it through the calyx. Then you're going to take another wire and insert it in the other direction. So you're going to have an X. You also don't want to insert them like on the same plane. So go up just a little bit, one below the other. And on the carnation, it's not so important to know, but on the rose boutonniere, you'll weaken that area of the um, calyx, so one below the other. And then taping this also, you're going to kind of pull it tight and pinch it, and then just tape down part way, not all the way to the bottom. We'll do that one more time so that we have a good sample. And one more little hint is you could cut all your wires at one time and that would sure enough save some time. Yeah, and it helps to kind of do a certain facial expression to get it to tape sometime, to stick. Okay, so now I have my six blossoms wired and taped, and we're ready to start constructing the corsage. So I have some samples stages. This is a beginning, a mid, and this is the end. So I'll have these laying here so that you can maybe take a peek at them too. But, so I'll take my bud, Take a small leaf, I'm going to attach it to the base of the flower, to the
to the base of the leaf. I do not want the leaf up here. I do not want the flower way up here. I want base to base with just a little bit of the flower, the leaf sh showing behind the carnation. The carnations are the star of the corsage. The leaves are just a necessary part to camouflage the mechanics. Do not tape all the way down. Just a time or two, you're just tacking it. So just a little tack. So uh, we're going to next step, we'll be joining our um, semi-open bud to our top flower. And you're going to want to have some space. You're going to want to see a little bit of the calyx here, which is the green part of the carnation, the cup that holds the petals. As you're building your corsage or any flower arrangement, the upper part of your design will have things further apart. As you come towards the center or the bottom of the arrangement, you put your bigger flowers, your heavier colors, your darker colors, because that builds the weight that's at the bottom. So as you're building your uh, arrangement, you need to do the lighter, smaller, uh, paler colors at the outer parts of your arrangement and you come towards the middle of the arrangement with your darker colors, your bigger flowers, your heavier product and that builds your focal area because anything that would be big and heavy on the top would make it visually off balance. It may be still standing up physically but visually to the eye it's going to appear that it's going to topple over. So on the corsage too we want to have a beautiful taper to our corsage. So give it some space. And then you're just going to tack once or twice. No tape all the way down. And one an important thing too that I tend to forget is you can trim out some of your wire and it'll keep it also lightweight as you're going. You want to make sure you cut the top wire and not the one you just added because otherwise you're going to have a weak spot. Our next small leaf goes at the base of the second flower. It goes behind both of them because these leaves are going to create, it's going to cover the mechanics. We're going to have a pretty back as well as a pretty front. So there again, tack once or twice. So that's the beginning. Then we're going to add our first larger flower. The next three flowers are going to create the focal point. So this one is going to also go in the front of um, your start. It's going to be, you pretty much keep them all straight up and down. And you're going to attach it to the backbone. You have a backbone starting. That's what we refer to this part as the backbone. So straight up against the backbone and fasten it with a tack. And then um, take your next larger two, and these two can be added together, or you can add them separately, but they're going to go kind of at the um, closer together to this one. And right now they look all clumped together. But these three together are going to create the focal point. So this one this one and this one are the focal point. So they almost look like basically one large carnation and they each point in different directions. So now let's add a leaf or two. So we're going to put one leaf over here and tack that. I'm building up some bulk on my stems. Let me cut a few of these wires out again. And then we're going to add a, another leaf over here. And notice that the leaves are just, just the tips showing. I don't have the leaves gigantic and out to here. It's just a little bit. And always place it as tight up against the backbone as you can. And I have to say for everyone, Practice, practice, practice on your corsages and wiring and taping. And I know budgets are tight in schools. You know, 
plant, put a sporing bush somewhere on campus. Look around the campus. I'm sure there's a bush somewhere that you can cut a leaf off. Get a couple of branches and talk to the grounds people and maybe they can save you some branches. Um, and just spend a whole hour wiring and taping leaves. It'll just give them skills. Um, it just takes tons of practice. I remember my first, poof, it's embarrassing. I shouldn't even tell anybody. Um, our last part that we're going to make on this corsage is going to be, at this point, I'm going to add the leaf first. And I'm just going to tack it. And this one you take and it's going to be bent because you start on your corsage flat, it rises up, and then it's going to come down. So it makes like a little bump in the road. It's a speed bump. So this one, we're going to take it and we're going to bend it over our nail downward. And we're going to slide it up along the backbone right to the base of those other three. And then this is the difficult part. And then you're going to get in there and tape it and you know, stretch the tape nice and smooth and tight. And then we're going to clip it. You want to clip the stem off so that it's hidden behind your corsage. But you still do need about an inch so that you have some counterbalance to the corsage and it'll be for pinning. Tape over those open wires. Nobody wants to get poked by an open wire. So cover up your end so it's all done. So that's the finished corsage. But now we want a crescent. So we're going to slightly move that one. We're going to slightly move this one. Then we're going to take it and arch the back. And that's going to open up this focal point so that you can see each individual wire. We're going to take the leaves and we're going to manipulate the leaves a little bit because you want a little separation between them. You don't want to flat up. A little separation will give depth, and depth is one of our principles and elements that are important. So this is your crescent corsage, obviously crescent, and this is the focal point where the three are together, but they each point off in a different direction. And so if I lay it down, voila. It's kind of staying. So just to kind of wrap it up, when we're grading, we're going to want to see a crescent. We're going to want to see the depths between the leaves and the flowers. You still see each individual flower. You want to see a strong focal point where the three come together. Um, balance. It's um, well balanced. Um, it's lightweight because I trimmed out as I went. It has, um, you'll see the spacing, and it must, must, must have secure mechanics. So those are some of the points that we'll be grading on. So practice, 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 and good luck. We hope to see you all pass this part of your certification. Thank you. Hi, I'm Debbie Waltman, Texas Master Florist. I'm a me member of the uh, Texas State Florist Education Team. Uh, today, I will be demonstrating the vase arrangement for the certification level two. You will need for this design uh, 12 roses, any color. You will need leather leaf fern, a filler type flower. For today's class, we're using limonium and a classic urn base. Uh, several companies make it. So the overall design when we're finished should be 22 to 26 inches tall, 16 to 18 inches wide. Um, for your students, you get them to relate to 16 to 18 inches like a serving platter on a table. Start working with the students to get interaction of common products common things in their life that they can relate to sizes. There are two methods that we're going to start this design off by gridding our greenery. Our leather leaf is going to be gridded. So there's two schools of thought. One is that you hand grid it in your hand by inserting 
And then the other one is grid it in the vase. My preferred method is to grid in the vase, but I wanted to show you the first one. Uh, this would be grid it in the hand. And this is done by taking your fern, inserting it through, and you have to kind of wiggle it to get it. And just you just keep inserting it in and twisting, inserting, twisting, inserting till you get a good tight nest of greenery. So I'm gonna pull this one back out because now I will do it my preferred method, which is greening in the vase. So fresh cut. Every time you put anything into water, you give it a fresh cut because laying out, they have dried off, the cells have dried off at the end, and so they're not going to take up water. So fresh cut into the water. So we'll take these, and you can clean off anything on the bottom. You want to have it tidy, so if you have a damaged leaf, pinch it off, clean it up. If it's a broken tip, pull it off. My first two, I usually put sort of back to back, weave them together so that um, the top sides of the fern, this is the side that faces up to the sunshine. This is the side that you will have in your design as the upside of your fern. This is the back side. So you just will continue adding fern, cleaning off anything down at the bottom, and seasonally, sometimes your fern has very, um, fuzzy little fibers. So just take your hand and wipe them off. Um, or have a paper towel or a towel handy to do it with. So cut, insert, cut, insert. So as I'm putting each one in, I'm aiming on a 45 degree across the vase, striking it through the wings of the fern so that everything's tightening up as I put it in. So you'll have 14 pieces of fern, but for the beginning you're going to put in about 10 because that should have you a great grid. So as you're looking from the top, you're seeing all the top sides of the fern. You're seeing a circle. You don't want to have like all the points pointing this way and then nothing on this side. It should come out to a nice circle. The next step will be to add the roses. I like to take my roses and just kind of tap them on the table and then pull out my taller ones because your taller ones are going to be up here and your lower ones are going to go on the bottom. And it's just kind of nice to have that done in advance. Um, you also want to clean off the stems. I have pre-cleaned some, but I'm going to demonstrate on one. Nip off the thorns. Not so deep that you cut into the bark layer because right underneath the bark layer is the layer of cells that the water travels up the stem. But you need it clean so that when you're inserting into the fern that it doesn't hang up, or for some instance that you want to pull it out and correct it, everything comes out. So let's just get this last stem here cleaned. Any leaves that might be down in the water come out because as we know, leaves and um, vegetative stuff in the water will help cause the water to decay, decay faster. So you need to have it clean. Um, it also helps the appearance of it at the end. So we're gonna do a layer of four roses, four roses, three roses, one rose. Again, two schools of thought. You can start at the top and work down, or you can start at the bottom and work up. Different shops that your students will be employed at in the future might have their own theories. But we want your students to be well trained that they can adapt. So once they know the rules and the actions, it's easy to switch over and adapt. But we teach the method of four, four, three, one, starting at the bottom, because as you insert the first four, it tightens up. And the tighter it gets, then when you put that last rose in, it should stand straight and tall. Okay, so my first four smaller roses. And again, 
we want to give them a fresh cut. We want to keep in mind that this arrangement is going to be at least 20 inches wide. We also want to make sure um, that overall we get the right height. So these first four roses are going to go into the vase, two opposite each other, twirl the vase, and a lazy Susan is good. Uh, if you can, and you can, you don't have to have a pretty uh, wooden one. You can just get a nice little, r simple little Rubbermaid one, but it'll help the students when you can just spin your vase. So four roses, basically a square. And then your next four are going to go in in between. So you have these two, so this one's going to come down in between. This row is going to be a little bit taller and towards the inside. You have to think of it as a stack of plates. You have a dinner plate, a lunch plate, a salad plate, a saucer. So there's going to be four levels and each one comes in into um, towards the middle. So sometimes they slide in well, sometimes they don't. So if you don't feel resistance when you're pushing the rows in, move it to a different spot because you need a little resistance to get it to stand up. And as always, a fresh cut. Okay, so we have four and four, and now we're going to do the three. And these are going to be almost vertical, not quite vertical. Let's take it off a little bit. Each rose, the end product is each rose should have its own space. Flowers are like people. You don't want to be crowded. Each one wants to shine in its own own little spot. Social distancing is important for flowers too. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a wobble, so we're going to move that one over a little bit. I'm going to take off a petal because it's kind of a torn petal, so we want to clean that up. And then our last rose goes straight down the middle for the top. So we have them equally distance. You know, some might be a hair close to something, but at least when you look at it, now I'm going to correct something here and it might help the students. See all the fern is not below it. I want some fern below it, so I'm going to pull that one back out and make sure I kind of space it in like that. And then you'll take your last remaining pieces of fern and put them in where you feel it needs to be some extra fern to kind of complete the circle. You can also add some up in the middle if you need to, to help support something. And a little tweaking. Okay, so there is your roses set up for that. Now, the next step is going to be to add your filler. Today, we're using limonium. Now, limonium, some of these fillers take some skill to get cut because you have, you know, if I cut this, all the, if I cut all the sides off, then I'm going to have some really sharp ones, and they all need to be down in the water. They need to be deep in the water so that the flowers last longer because um, after a few years of as a florist, I realize that people do not add water every day as they should. So the, the lower pieces you can cut off and use as they are. Also with limonium, it has a direction on it. Um, they, they arch. So you need to follow that arch in the arrangement as you're um, 
placing them. You, want, you don't want them in backwards, facing down. They need to be up like the leather leaf, facing up towards the light. So these few pieces are going to be used for another project. Um, this one's long enough. This one's too short. Another project. So we'll have a taller piece and get the little nubs off so they insert well. Um, your taller pieces will go in the middle. And as you're placing your filler, you also want to make sure that it's spread out all the way around. You don't want to use all your filler up and find out you have it on half of the arrangement, not the other half. So spread it around. And now I'm going to set this one aside and pull the perfect one. We're just going to kind of wrap this up. I want to tell you that um, the things that we'll be looking for when we're grading, you want nice spacing from all the roses that nothing is clustered together. That if I look from the top, then all of them are on one side and not the other side. You want a great height, 22 to 26 inch roses. You will be given for this design, 60 centimeter roses. So that's some good length. Uh, don't cut all the length off and throw it to the floor. The customer paid for the length, so give it to them. So 22 to 26 inches tall. You want 16 to 18 inches wide. Uh, a dome effect. You don't want it uh, flat on the top. A nice dome is one of the things we'll be looking for. So, and the water should be clean. You shouldn't have crumbs in it. If you have a lot of crumbs in it, you can pull it out hold it, clean it out, and then back in the base. And so that is your base arrangement for level two certification. Thank you for participating in the TSFA classroom. Perfecting these designs will take a great deal of practice and review. These videos will be archived at atatntsfa.org under the tab Teachers and TSFA Classroom. PowerPoints and pictures of these designs are also located there. TSFA offers classes from beginning to advanced, along with design presentations and hands-on design classes. Being a part of TSFA has multiple benefits. A very important benefit to highlight are the scholarships are, that are available to students and teachers, so be sure and take a look at tsfa.org. Thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing you real soon at an in-person event.